Melissa, the Cupcake Stitcher. I want to welcome you back to my 15th video. Uh, this one is definitely long overdue. So I actually made this video last week. Um, and then when I went to put all the clips together, somehow things got deleted. And really it was just a big disaster. So we're redoing today. Today is Sunday, July 14th. Um, and yeah, we've got a lot to talk about today. I don't really feel like I have a ton of stitching, although my whip pile did just grow between this week and last week. Um, but I got a lot of stuff on my table here today. So, StitchCon was amazing. I'm not going to do a whole recap type thing because at this point you've all you've seen everybody else's. Um, they're all going to explain things better than I am. I will share a little bit of my own personal experience, um, but just the word we're going to use is amazing. So I went to StitchCon last year. It was great. Um, 2019 was even better. I am definitely an introvert. I stepped out of my shell quite a bit more this year than I did last year. Um, even though there were a lot more people and I was nervous about it. I just, I don't know what it was. I just did much better this year. It was much more social. So I went down to Cincinnati Wednesday night. I stayed with Katie Glass, um, Thoughts from the Stitchy Side on Instagram. Um, she's one of our Whistle Stop crew. You've probably heard Pam and Steph talk about her if you watch them. Um, she's the one with all the stash. And so I drove down Wednesday night. We just kind of hung out. We went into her stash room or her craft room. Um, and I was really overwhelmed. She has a lot of stuff. I thought I had a lot of stuff and then Katie makes me feel better about myself. So we went through her kitted up projects. We picked out a couple things for her to bring to StitchCon to potentially start. Um, and then we went through her stash as well and she let me take a few things. Uh, she was definitely more generous than um, I really wanted her to be. She was like, just take it. And I was like, I can't. And she was like, just take it. So. Yeah, that was fantastic. I mean, at one point she got all her fabric out and she had tubs of fabric and it was just all sitting in front of me and I like literally, I felt like I was gonna hyperventilate with how much goodness was in front of me. So I'm just gonna go through and show you what I got from Katie. Um, so this video really has no rhyme reason. It's just gonna be pretty organic and just I'm gonna work through my table as I see fit. Um, so the things that I got from Katie, of course, it's the farthest stuff away. Alrighty. Most of it. This isn't from Katie. Um, so I got a couple things of Victoria Motto Sampler Threads. I do not have any of these. Um, she did give me one for Christmas. I have not used it yet. So I picked out two more blues. Um, she had them organized by like rainbow color on like three giant um, binder rings. And it was amazing. Um, I just sat and pet the floss for a while. So the two that I picked out was Blue Bonnet, which is this one here. And then the other one is Blue Bells. I'm definitely a blue girl. There you go. The colors are coming through really well today. I changed up my lighting situation and I think this is going to be my new go-to because this is working really well from what I can see in the camera. Um, blue is obviously my favorite color because she also gave me some fabric. Um, this is probably my favorite piece. This is um, a Joblin, a Witchel Joblin um, Twilight Mist. It just feels good. So I love, 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 love that. No idea what I'm going to put on it. Um, but you always need more blue fabric in your stash, right? And this beautiful piece, this is um, Under the Sea Fabric Hurricane by Leslie, 32 count, blues and purples, some kind of mermaid will probably go on that. I've been really obsessed with mermaids lately. Don't know why, just happened. And then I did kit up a project at Katie's house as well. So she gave me the pattern, the floss and the fabric. Um, and so this is a Sue Hillis. I'm not gonna try and say it because I'll butcher it. 
And there were a couple people stitching this at StitchCon. Um, and there's a salve for it. And I didn't look it up. And I was like, I'm for, I kept, I was like, I'm forgetting something. She tagged me in it. So I will go look at my Instagram and I will put the salve for this down in the box. That's probably one of the only things I'm going to put down there, but I will put the salve name down in the box. And if I remember about it, I'll put it somewhere up here too. Um, so I really love this. This was the Stitch Away 2017 piece. Um, there's normally a theme, so I believe it was a Paris theme, which would make sense with this piece. And Joe, um, Barbara's husband, keepsakes, made all of these framed trays for everyone in attendance at Stitch Away that year. I sadly went to my first Stitch Away in 2018, um, so I missed out on this beauty, but I love this. And so I picked out some fabric and I want to do something a little bit different. I love the colors here. Um, and so I did pick out this Victorian motto, which is I think berry, berry red. Very, very pretty. Color is great with this light right in front of my face. I might be blind by the end of the video, but it's gonna work. Um, and this fabric, I think it's a 32. We just cut a piece that will work for it. Um, this is Stitchy Box exclusive. She doesn't know the name of it. We don't know where it came from, but we both love the color. And it's this dark charcoal gray. So pretty, especially with the red against it. It's very Ohio State-ish, which if you know me, perfect. Um, I only went to Ohio State for seven years of my education. Seven out of seven, right? So. I love, love, love that, and I'll probably incorporate some white in there as well, because there is some white in this stitch piece. Um, so, gorgeous. I need to start that. I have it all kitted up. Um, I just need to do it. So, thank you, Katie. And then the last thing that she basically just forced me to take, because it's Katie and I do what she says, um, is this tiny container feed storage set. So, she actually had two of these, and she doesn't do too much beading. Um, but there's, it's an 82 piece set. I'm guessing, I'm not going to guess. Um, but lots of little, little trays and stuff that you can just put your, uh, your beads in. So I will organize my beads at some point into this because it's super cool. Um, and they're much more secure than the little Mill Hill, uh, packages that you get your beads in normally. So that was all my stuff that I got from Katie. Um, we stayed up really late Tuesday nights and Tuesday night, Wednesday nights. We stayed up really late every night, Katie and I did. Um, and then we, we drove in each day. So the next morning we got up, we had a few little stores um, just to stop in at. And then we went to brunch and then we went to the convention center. And so by the time we got there, there was a huge long line. We got there right before noon. Um, so they were starting to let people in like right at noon. So we had to wait a little bit in line. It was really smooth and, uh, you know, stood in line and talked to people and it was great. Uh, we met our table members, um, in the room. They picked out a great location. We were kind of tucked away on one of the side walls. Um, so, so we could just kind of put all our stuff along the wall, which was fantastic. Um, and I'm going to say just like everybody else said, I had the best table. Um, it was our whistle stop gang minus Pam and Steph. They, those two were working the room, obviously, because they were hosting um, with, you know, Nicole and Barbara and all of the above. So they were working the room. Uh, so the rest of it was, it was myself, Katie, Candy, Tony, Sharon, Delisha, Crystal, Lisa. I pretty much just went around the circle um, at the table. And of course, we know how to do retreats right. We bring lots of goodies. I brought cupcakes. Uh, Tony brought crack, which is like puff corn coated in uh, caramel. I don't know how she makes it, but it is literally crack. Um, you can't stop eating it. And, you know, we just, we had a, we had a fantastic time sitting kind of in the back of the room. Um, I did not go to keepsakes this time around just because I've been to keepsakes before. I wanted other people to experience 
and I, I really didn't want to walk through the crowded rooms. I talked about that last time. Um, it's a beautiful store. I think they had it set up maybe a little bit different than it's normally set up, but I just, I was like, I'm just going to shop the annex and I did enough damage in there, um, to kind of cover myself. So, uh, we'll get through that haul here in a little bit. Uh, oh, at registration, we of course got our swag, which is stuff we all get if you ever watch The Office. And so we got this awesome stitch con bag. Um, you've seen everybody kind of talk about it. It's fantastic. It holds everything you need. So we got this little mesh pocket here. We got the big pocket in front um, that does have some pockets inside as well. So I think there's three little slots there. There are. And then some pen holder elastics over here. I was putting my pen um, and my scissors fit right in there. Another one over here and then a nice decent sized bag that you can fit a lot of your products in. This is what I took to the late night stitching room over at the La Quinta each night. Um, I just picked whatever project I was going to be doing um, and threw my stuff in there uh, along with like my wallet and you know goodies. And inside the bag we of course got more free stuff. Um, so we got this lovely StitchCon 2019 journal. There's the logo. You guys have all seen this. It's, you know, cross-stitched um, pattern. Super cute. And I have recently been putting in my um, projects in here because School of Magical Stitches just came out with an outrageous stitching year-long challenge. I just skipped, I just realized I skipped a page. I'll have to put some other things in there. Um, where you're supposed to stitch like a million stitches not going to happen but you get points for every 2000 so and that's how I'm keeping track of kind of like my running total for each web and it went up once I hit 2000 for that one I'll post a picture um, and add up my total so love 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 this I'm not normally a journal person but I think that's going to be very helpful for me just kind of keeping track if I remember to put things down um, we got this cute little Ohio with a little heart where Cincinnati is at um, so I'm, I'm up here. This is where I'm at, over in this area. That's gonna go on my Christmas tree. Last year we got, I think a little wood piece with the Ohio um, outline on it, so that was cute. And then um, I've been wanting to eat this, but I knew that I was gonna have to redo my video after I went to edit, and uh, I haven't gotten to. So this is the pralines. One of the stitchers brought that for us. Super, super yummy. Can't wait to eat that. Um, and then we, of course, got some free patterns. We had a whole envelope full of them. I'm going to show you the ones that I can that have pictures um, that aren't just patterns. Um, so we have a nosegay from 1604. This is from Works by ABC. I don't know if it's going to focus. My first focusing issue of the day. Um, and then. This is by Petal Pusher, Common Thread, stitched together by a Common Thread. This is kind of a cute pattern. This would be a good for like a small exchange of some sort. Obviously I'm covering the pattern with the other pattern. Uh, this one I believe is by Miss Julie McConnell. Rearranging here. Uh, it's Mrs. Claus's booty. She did just show this on her one of her most recent videos super cute. I love what she did with the, the fur. Uh, those two. Barefoot needle art. Stitch in the hand. So it says toes in the sand, stitch in the hand. I can show you this one. Um, one of them was there. One of the designers. Amy. Amy? No. Amy. Amy didn't come. drawn a blank but one of those people right there uh, be joyous always this one's kind of cute it's not the pattern I promise the pattern's on the back just a picture of what it would look like um, of course we got the stitch con 2019 logo I still never stitched con or stitched the first one and then everyone had a raise the roof design and there were a bunch of different ones mine was my cone runneth over which I love. I love that you can just essentially pick your own fibers for the ice cream cone and then just stitch it however you want. So 
That one was super cute. I liked that. Happy I got it. Um, and then Lynn, uh, I almost said Lindy Stitches. Stephanie from Lindy Stitches uh, came around and kind of introduced herself um, and gave everyone one of these. The little turtle. It's so stinking cute. I love him. Um, I will definitely be stitching him at some point. Um, so that was great, you know, that she got to walk around and kind of give that stuff to us. And I walked around tables um, by giving away needle minders. So I made about 120 some needle minders the night before I left because that's what I do. I'm a procrastinator at heart. Um, I obviously did not get 120 needle minders back, um, but I was very happy to just use that as kind of an excuse to go and introduce myself to other people. Um, and it worked out really well. So I did get rid of all of my needle minders except one. And that was because I wanted to keep that one for myself. And it's this little guy up here because, duh, he's super cute. Oh, cupcake. Um, most of these I did receive at StitchCon, except for that one, that one I had, this one from Sharon I had, and then this guy I had. The rest of them are new, um, and I think I have one or two on, a, on projects already. Uh, so I actually just took this. This is a little stand that I got at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't remember where. Um, and I just had all my needle minders kind of on it. It was fantastic. Everyone really liked it. I'm sure people will be doing this next year. Um, yeah, so needle minders. I would tell you who I got all of these from, but I only remember a few and I'm not gonna go through and be super particular and pick things out. So, cause I would feel bad if I didn't remember who I got one of them from. Uh, other freebie stuff that I got. I got this lovely um, scissor fob that's got a little mermaid. Whoop, whoop, there we go. Little mermaid charm. So it's just my favorite pair of scissors. That was on the freebie table. There were a bunch of them. The first one I picked up actually had a little fish with some blue and green jewels on it. And I liked it, but I really wanted the mermaid. And um, the girl sitting at the table next to me, Jennifer, hi Jennifer if you're watching, um, was super kind and was like, well, I can trade you. And I was like, I don't want to be a baby, but I really want the mermaid. And so she traded with me. Um, I did not have the patience to go through the freebie table. Most of these were ones that um, Crystal grabbed and we kind of picked. I did go go back and then look at the Mill Hill because there were a ton of Mill Hill kits. Um, and so I got a couple different ones. Most of them are kind of fall-ish or Halloween-y. So we got this little ghost here. I've got this little one as well. He's super cute. Sorry about the glare. And then um, this is a little maple leaf. Some of the beads. Some of these have beads in them, others do not. Not a big deal, I can just go buy beads. And then the bigger one that I got is Autumn Basket, which does have the beads, it does not have the thread, but that's okay. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just DMC, so. Um, it also doesn't have the perforated paper, but I can work around that. I'm doing my uh, Mill Hill Ghost Trilogy on fabric anyways, so if I want to use perforated paper, I can always pull it from that. Um, it's blue, but I might be able to flip it over. I don't know. We'll worry about that when we get to that problem. Um, I think I'm going to do exchange stuff next. So I did participate in the Smalls Exchange. My exchange was on Saturday morning, um, and I have a little clip of my actual small. Um, once it was all finished, I had it stitched last time. Um, I finished it the weekend before StitchCon and it's adorable. So much so that I bought another chair, I went to Hobby Lobby, bought a chair, and I'm going to restitch it for myself because I loved it. So, I, like I said, mine was on Saturday morning. I just completely lost my train of thought. It's Sunday night, I don't wanna go back to work tomorrow. It's gonna be a long day. And I just wanna cross stitch, and I haven't done any cross stitch this week. Um, and so, 
this is the bag that I picked out. I was in the white exchange number 59. Um, the bag was super, super cute. And so I picked this up and inside I got lots of goodies. Um, I got this from Angela, um, who does not have a floss tube. And I don't think she had an Instagram either because I asked. Um, and so she stitched this cute little ornament for me and it says Pine Tree Inn. I don't know if it's gonna, there we go. Her stitches are beautiful. The finish is, it is, was finished by Vanna. Um, and I watched Vanna, uh, like pillow tutorial when I did my small, or maybe I watched the flat fold. I don't know. I've watched Vanna's tutorials before and I do not understand how she got this this firm. I fluffed that crap and I stuffed my pillow till it was, you know, full to bursting. And this is like so smooth, not smooth, like flat. Like mine was like puffed up like a giant pillow with how much I put in there. I don't know how she managed this. It's almost like she has like a little pillow form in there. That's how like, it's perfect. Um, it's also Vana, which is why it's perfect. And so that was my lovely, lovely small. I love that. Definitely be going on my Christmas tree as well. It's probably going to sit out until then because I'm too lazy to pull my Christmas box out. Um, it will just sit on one of my shelves. And I got some other goodies in my bag as well. She gave me a bunch of these little fabric holders for your Um I bought some as well in the annex, which I didn't put in my haul, but that's all right. Um, and these have been really, really, really useful. I hadn't used them before, but I really like them. So she got me like, I think eight or, eight or so of those. Um, and then she gave me this little Prairie Schooler freebie, this little Santa. He's cute. Quick little stitch. Um, she got me some floss from Color and Cotton. One is, I don't really know what it's called. I love this color though. Um, it's a beautiful, I'm gonna have a little bit more tan. It's almost a little more yellow in real life. Um, so this one does not have a name. It just says a gift for you. Um, and then this other car color is rhubarb, which I am obsessed with. I love this color. Put it back here. If I put it in front of my face, it focuses real, real well. And then the last thing she gave me, which, oh no, there's something else. I'm not gonna get it. It was a little, you've probably seen them, they're the little hummingbird uh, needle threader cutters. So she got me one of those. And then she got me a pair of finger scissors the gold stork. Um, I have, I do not own a pair of finger scissors. Come with a little case. There we go. Maybe. Boop. There we go. Um, so I'm very, very happy with everything I got. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, I love it all. And um, the person that received mine was Sylvia from Texas. Um, she, I, so we all kind of helped each other out so that we didn't have to like, well, we all went over after to find our partners. Um, but we kind of like watched out for each other to be like, uh, that person got yours or this person got yours just so that we didn't have to hunt quite as much. And, uh, someone saw Sylvia, um, grab my bag and I couldn't see her when she opened it. And I just, I love giving gifts. Like it's my favorite thing. I sometimes go a little overboard and that's all right. But I loved seeing her face when she opened the gift because she looked super excited. She told me that her uh, table mates all wanted to steal mine, which made me feel real happy about myself. And uh, yeah, I was just so happy that she loved it. Um, Small, the, I, I will never not do a smalls exchange because I love giving gifts to people. <sighs> Alrighty. What else do we have? Let's go through, we're going to go through projects next. We're going to take a sidetrack because I normally do projects before I do haul. So we'll save haul for last because I got a lot of it again. And then that way people don't want to watch haul, which let's be honest. You all come for the haul, right? In every cross-stitch video, don't lie, you come for the haul. Um, 
I'm going to go through projects that I have been working on um, and then the two finishes that I had at StitchCon. Yes, not one, but two finishes at StitchCon. I didn't start anything new since I've seen you guys last. The last thing I think I started was Skeleton Crew. I did buy some other color and cotton for that, um, but I did not put it in mix, although it's right over here. I reorganized my stuff. So I went to um, the co container store, which I've never been before, and I bought a bunch of stuff. I bought this large tote um, and then like a firm plastic one to go inside and then I bought a bunch of these um, clear vinyl bags which I love and then little tags to say what the project is even though I can obviously see through them. So I do have some project bags but I like having these so much better than like the little flimsy plastic bags that I was using before. Um, so. Let's go through our projects. This was one of this week's projects. And it was to work on, for Magical Stitches homework, um, work on whips. One, two, two of the three. One, two, or 12 for Grimwald Place. And so this was number 12, which I picked. Um, I already had this one done. I think I showed him recently. I don't remember which one he is. Is that Eerie? I think it's no, because I'm working on Eerie. Ellis. This is Ellis. Um, I've decided that I'm going to finish them separately because I put them really far away. I could probably put the other one in between, but I didn't line the ghosts up or anything like this. So I am currently working on Eerie, which is this guy here. He's got swirls. Um, and so stitch 500 stitches on that. I did roughly, I think five, roughly 502, like 502 stitches. Um, on that and that's got the vast majority of the stitching done. He is mostly beads Like the only other stitch part is Down here kind of at the bottom. I almost want to say his tail, but I don't do ghosts have tails I don't know the bottom of his Self yeah um, All all I have left then is the the, the rest of the back stitch and then it's beads beats from there on out so that is my progress on him I've been really bad about posting on Instagram lately there's nothing new guys nothing new oh goodness this makes me feel good because now I can just put them right away I can clean as I do my floss tube video guys it's like a dream come true for me because my house is a disaster right now and I need some organization in my life. So, um, this was, was this number two? No, I worked on this for the week before. And I, I only did one, two of the three prompts that week. And this was something that's been in suspension. Uh, so I have not worked on this project since January. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why. The first is because I do not like the pattern um, it's really hard to follow. It's in color. I generally prefer black and white patterns. And then all the symbols are numbers. So it gets a little confusing. Not that I don't know my numbers, but I just don't like the way it is. The pattern page, it, like they don't line up. I just, I don't like the pattern. I love the design. I don't like the pattern. Um, the other thing is I don't, this is like one of my, this is my only non full coverage piece on Ada. No, that's a lie. But one of those is technically my mom's. So I have two projects that are non full coverage on Ada and I just, I don't like it anymore. I used to be an Ada stitcher. I just, I've moved on and I found things that I prefer more. Um, so this is flowered wreath. You can see I really don't have that much left. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to put something in the middle. I believe it's supposed to say like enjoy, which is really dumb. Um, so I would probably put something else. I know how I'm going to finish it. I just need to finish it. Um, yeah. So one of my last pieces, you can't tell it's Ada all the way back here, right? Yeah. This is like Michael's Ada. There are some very nice Ada's out there. I bought my uh, coworker 
some color on Cotton Ada, and I was like, mm, I kind of want to keep this for myself. Um, but then I remember reminded myself, I don't really stitch on Ada. Um, this was another neat needle binder that I got from StitchCon. I love this one. Super sparkly. Anything that sparkled, I was like, I'll take that. Thank you. So I worked on that. I might try and make this a priority just so I can get it off of my list and out of my basket of things to stitch. Um, this one I worked on for two different things. So one prompt last week, one prompt this week. I don't remember what last week's prompt was. I didn't write it down. That was number one, or week one's, one of the week one options. And then this was my second whip on my whip list for this this past week. Um, to stitch 500 stitches on <sighs> words, people. 500 stitches on whip number two. So I worked some more of, I, I worked a lot of the green and like the seaweed and in her um, fin. And then I worked one of the darker blues that probably is not even showing up on here. So this is also on Ada with, you know, extremely small borders. There's like nothing left. I'll have to sew some fabric onto that um, to finish it out. But, whew, the colors on this look real good, people. Real good. So we're going to organize as we go. Sorry if you don't like waiting, but that's just what's happening today. Um, I can't remember if I've worked, if I showed this, if I've worked on it since I've shown it last time. Um, this is also another focus piece and a piece of haul. So a piece of haul is this beautiful project bag by um, Jan Calvert. So she is a Cincinnati stitcher. She's one of the finishers for Pete's Sakes. Um, but this is my Disney castle. So my friend's due date is in, or not due date, her C-section date is like in 10 days. We just had her two-year-old's birthday party today. To her first daughter turned two um, today. And uh, so this is the piece for the baby. This is on 28 count Lugana Beach Walk by Under the Sea Fabric. I will probably put her name underneath um, and maybe like a little quote over one inside, like there's a Mickey ear here. Um, so that's kind of like the border. I finished the side with like the background color. So I just had to do fill in and then the other side of the castle. So this one's coming along. I don't think I've worked on this since I showed it last time. It is on opalescent fabric. Oh guys, this is giving me my new setup. Everything is just showing up real nice on the camera. Why did I never think of this before? So I have my aunt light like shining in my eyes. I'm pretty, I'm not smart. <laughs> That's probably all think I'm vain. I'm not, I'm just, whatever. Um, I don't really know if I worked on that, but I'll show it to you anyways. We'll have to do another whip a parade at the end of the year or something. This one I also had pulled out in a really long time. Um, I did it for one of the extra credit assignments and I started the second extra credit assignment for it and I just, I didn't get to it. Um, which is my one Mira that I have going right now. Lady of Mystery, which is beautiful. I had a lot of fun working on her. I might need to pull this one out more often. Um, oh, this is a needle minder I made. Needle binder I made. I might pick out a different one, but that was just the one I had in my bag when I was doing it. So there she is. I worked a little bit more on her dress. Um, I picked it for a late night stitching because that's easy to stitch on. I mean, I think I use, I think it calls for like four skeins of 915, which is the main dress color. So I'm working on that, and then once it's done, it'll just be fill in with the other colors so she's coming along like I said I might need to work on her because I enjoyed stitching on that when I pulled her out um the other one the other big one that I'm working on I do not have her off the q-snap because I just worked on her um for what 
for year five, week one, The Boring Neighbor. Um, because this piece, while I love it, um, can get a little boring because she's got giant blocks of color. So this is my Mucha Rapunzel um, by Pinky the Pink on Etsy. Um, Minty Stitcher is working on Kita right now, if you follow her on Instagram, and she is powering through. Mindy, I don't know how you're stitching it so fast. You kind of give me motivation um, to work on her a little bit more. The other person um, that I really follow progress on one of the princesses is Heather, the confetti stitcher. I'm obsessed with Heather a little bit. I don't know if she knows that, but I am. And uh, she's working on Aurora. And so she started at the top and is working her way down. I started in the middle and I'm going to do the bottom half of the dress um, because I figure if I can get through the dress, the other half will be fun because it's a little bit more detailed. Like this is just large blocks of color. Um, let me see if I have the picture on hand of what it looks like. I think I've shown this to you many, many times. Loose thread. So she is gorgeous. Rapunzel's my fave. Um, Ariel and Rapunzel. Did you guys all see that Ariel's cast? Who's excited? Um, I'm also really excited for Mulan, the live action Mulan. I don't care what people say. Live action Disney movies are the bomb. I still haven't seen Aladdin. I want to. I'm not sure about Lion King, but. Lion King's legit. I don't think it can be topped. I'm just not sure about the live action animals. Alright, that's just going to be kind of stuffed in there for now. Um, Alright, so I've got my finishes. These are two projects that I kind of picked out specifically to work on at StitchCon. I made the prompts worked um, and I was able to squeeze out two finishes, which was fantastic. So Donna and Shauna, uh, Stitching a Doodah, um, passed out beads, and you got to ring the finish bell. Um, Pam and Seth brought that and put it up on the podium, and then you could show everyone, and then they brought you beads. And so I got one, not one, but two necklaces, because I had two finishes. And um, the first one I worked on was Country Cottage Needleworks Snow Days. Um, I've been getting close to a finish on this one, and I was like, I'm going to do it. I had quite a bit of the, the snowman's bottom to work on and a little bit of like some of the border pieces. So I needed like the green and the red and the corners um, and a little bit of this border and then like the snow that goes all the way across. I had like the little mounds done, but I needed the snow all the way across. Um, so I finished this one Saturday morning. And um, I'm pretty pleased with it. So this is on 32 count vintage country mocha. And I am obsessed. Woo, look, guys, camera setup working so well today. Um, yeah, I really, really like it. I did change out some of the colors. So the brown calls for roasted chestnut, chestnut. When I think I was kidding it, they didn't have it. So I picked nutmeg which is this color here. And then um, I did use the green, which is four leaf clover. And then the red I changed from licorice red to ribbon red. And I love it. The other ones are just white and uh, black and one of the, the, the carrot is a DMC orange. So oh, super cute. I know how I'm gonna finish it. So that'll be out this um, winter super far away, right? Um, and I am going to be passing this pattern on today. Um, well, not today, but if you watch my video and you want this pattern, please say I want to stitch snow days and tell me what your favorite season is. Um, my favorite season is fall, mainly because there's cooler weather. Right now, it's like Ohio is just an armpit. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's gross. Um, so this was originally sent to me by Heather Moore, the blessed stitcher. And uh, I had commented on her Instagram post. and was like, that pattern's super cute. And she goes, do you want it? And I was like, yes. And so she sent it to me. And so she has her um, start and finish date on the back. And then I have my start and finish date. So we're just gonna keep the trend going. So whoever gets this, make sure you put your name, um, your start and your finish date, and then please pass it on. So. 
I always like to see where patterns go, and I think it's cool if you kind of, um, you know, mark it down where it went. So you can see who stitched it before. So if you want this, like I said, please be 18. Um, I don't, it's, I'm just sending the pattern, so you don't really have to be like in the US or anything like that. Um, you can be wherever and I'll send it to you because it's just a pattern. Uh, so be a subscriber, yada, yada, yada. I want to stitch snow days, your favorite season. That's what I want to know. Um, please also don't say giveaway because I'll delete your comment. Thanks. Uh, the other finish I have, like I said, Saturday morning at SitchCon, um, I picked up this one, which was also super close to a finish, uh, Gratitude by Heart and Hand. Um, gratitude, gratitude makes everything grow. So this is a set from Heart and Hand. Um, so it's got the fabric, the trim, everything in it. I just need to put it together. And I did make one small change, and that was changing the words from Wood Trail to Classic Color Works Tartan Plaid, which I am obsessed with, and it matches the fabric really well. Um, so I finished that. I probably could have gotten two out of this, like done it this way and gotten two, but oh well. I'm not normally one to waste fabric, but obviously, because you just saw my little mermaid one where I have like half inch border, whatever all is that. Um, yeah, so I love this. I really didn't have much left to do. I had like this big flower. Um, and then some of these other flowers weren't fully filled in and then there are a couple beads on there. So I had those beads to do. Really didn't take me long. Um, once I sat down and did it, it took me a long time because I was really chatty on Saturday. It is what it is. Um, yeah, so I was a little sad. Cecilia Turner was there, um, but I think she was only there Thursday and Friday. And so she wasn't there. I would have liked to have gotten a picture of my finish with her but she wasn't there. So, a little sad, but that's okay. Um, maybe another time. Alrighty. What else? I think we're to the point where we can do haul, which is super exciting. Um, actually, one other thing, because I didn't count this in my swag stuff earlier. Uh, this was our take and make, or make and take project Sunday morning. Um, the, uh, key fob. So this is this year's version. So we got the little school bus, the stitchy bus. Um, that got flipped around. Oh, please, there we go. Uh, 2019. And then I picked out a gray tassel. And then this is on my second favorite, favorite pair of scissors with last year's, which had 2018 and um, a little laptop. And then I, last year I picked out the blue. So. Second favorite pair of scissors. So I'm just gonna keep acquiring uh, StitchCon. <laughs> this is gonna be like the heaviest uh, pair of scissors known to man. So now we can move on to haul. We're gonna do odds and ends first. Um, the annex was amazing. They had some fantastic trunk shows um, and I bought a lot of stuff for myself and then my my giveaway from last video's um, winner so I contacted her on Instagram I got that sent out in the mail this week again because I'm a major slacker um, it should have arrived yesterday but I think she was potentially out of town so um, I haven't heard from your, her yet hopefully she has gotten that so I don't obviously then have her stuff to show, but maybe she'll post a picture on Instagram or something. Um, my odds and ends first before I get into patterns. Uh, I don't normally use thread keeps, but I thought this one was super cute. This little peacock. So I bought that. And then I bought this laser cut box. Um, so I can put something like a pattern or something on the top here. It's super cute. I have no idea what I'll keep in it, but does that matter? No, it does not. You buy it because you want it. Um, so this is Joseph's workshop made in the USA. 
ends. No, nope. my odds and ends. And then my patterns that I got. Um, heart and hand. Sorry, picking my foot up. Um, the Apo Scary Apothecary series. These are the second three in the set. You probably have all seen these. We have Cauldron Cleaner. Sounds cute with a little kitty cat. Um, coffin Paint. I love this one because I love the After Lifetime Warranty. I just think it's funny. And then Cackle Lozenges, which I really could have used after StitchCon because I lost my voice. Um, I went back to work and uh, I think they were like, are you super well rested? And I was like, no. And they were like, what did you do? And I was like, I cross-stitched. Like, why do you have no voice? I'm like, because really, when I say cross stitch, I talk. Um, which is just what happens when you go to a cross stitch retreat. Um, I also picked up Barefoot Needle Arts Naughty. I'm gonna guess that's how you say it, like nautical. Um, so they had a stitched version of this and it was stunning. It is giant, but I loved it. I love the, the rope knots. Just super well thought out pattern, I think. It's super cute. A couple starfish, captain's wheel, the anchor. I'm into a lot of nautical stuff right now. Um, yeah, never know when I'm going to stitch that, but I will. Uh, Lindy Stitches, Stars Bright. I love her um, sense of color, and I love 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 this quote um i need a boyfriend so that i can stitch this for us because it's weird if i stitch it for myself because it says we will be together and have our books and at night be warm in our bed together with the windows open and the stars bright like that right there is relationship goals books bed stars perfect um not obsessed with the birds I do like them but not like it's not like I picked out the pattern for the birds I picked out the pattern for the quote um, and then I love this kind of like patchwork quilt border love and I saw the stitch model and it was stunning so I really like that one and then I picked out a couple works by ABC the first one is Lady Evelyn's filet lace uh, which is this pattern here. I saw it stitched, I think it was over one on 28 count. Um, so it was like a navy blue fabric and then stitched with white. It was stunning. Um, and then this was a small little scissor fob. So much smaller than this one is. I love this one. This one's, this one's pretty good too. Um, and what I really like about her designs is that she gives you kind of the history of the piece, um, like her inspiration and stuff behind it. The other one that I got from her is, you've all seen this one, um, Gossamer Lace in cross stitch version. So she has the cross stitch and the black work. Um, my friend Katie bought both of them. And so she's gonna do them kind of like Arlene did where they're like reverse. So this is the cross stitch version here. Um, I thought she had a picture of the, maybe she doesn't. Um, but then obviously there's the black work one, which she did on blue fabric in white. So I guess it's white work, black work. I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about though, right? Um, yeah, so I love this. Again, this is giant. Never know when I'm going to do that. We all know at this point that Melissa likes big projects, which you cannot lie. Um, the other trunk show that I just had to purchase something from was Rosewood Manor. Um, and this is Hello Moon. Good night, sun. Hello Moon. Super cute. Um, pretty simple. It's a smaller rosewood manor pattern compared to Sunrise Sunset. Um, which they had stitched versions of those. I love it even more. Even though I'm working on it. Like, it's just so pretty. Um, that was about the only time that I had a fangirl moment. Um, was I was in the annex and there was a stitcher talking about 
me because she saw the sunrise sunset and she goes cupcake stitcher is working on sunrise right now and then she turned around and I was like standing there it's kind of weird at first and then Jan Hicks was standing next to her and she was like oh yeah you're gonna put them on either side of your fireplace and that was when I about died because Jan Hicks knew who I was and she remembered like a small detail from one of my videos and I'm pretty sure she probably thought I was weird because I had like I said a fangirl moment um, I tried I try to keep my fangirling to a minimum just because I don't want to scare people um and I so that's my pattern haul from StitchCon Annex. I did have one that I ordered off of eBay. Um, I think I saw this on Organic Granny's last video. I did watch everybody's, at least one video from every person if I had not watched them before. Um, and so I think Organic Granny showed one of these patterns in the last, um, it's a Who Knew pattern. They are out of print. Um, and I am looking for two of the other ones ocean daughter and ocean treasure so who knew ocean daughter ocean treasure the one that i did get is ocean curiosity um and so they are they're all mermaids um and they're pretty much monochromatic so the only thing that's different colors is the um fireworks up here and i think it's in like a black um rainbow gallery black rainbow gallery so the rest of that is supposed to be stitched in midnight from the gentle arts. Um, so I just, I really like the simplicity of these patterns. They're really pretty. Um, Ocean treasure is really the one that I want, um, but they are out of print and they are hard to find. So if you guys know of anyone that is selling them or know where I can get one, please give me that info. Um, I already did put a, an eBay search save for um, these patterns but we'll see what happens I think I saw one of them at one point and I was like thinking about it and then I didn't realize that it was like an out-of-print pattern because I didn't put that on the post um, beforehand and then when I was watching organic granny's video she I don't remember which one she was showing uh, but I was like oh my god that's that pattern I thought about buying and then I didn't and now I have um, non buyers remorse all right last thing in terms of showing you and then i just have some shout outs from people that i met um and now love at stitchcon uh is my my fiber stuff so i did buy a crap ton of color and cotton i have never used their floss before everyone says it's like butter um or the fabric is like butter i just really like um her colors her floss just has like a sheen to it that not a lot of other um, hand dyed threads have. Um, so pretty. So I'm gonna probably go through, through these like super fast. Let's do this. Do you guys want me to? No, I don't know. Let's just do it. We're already gonna be at an hour, it's fine. Um, we have almond, ash plum, I got two of these. This is Battleship. Love this color. It's like a blue-gray. Shocker. Melissa loves blue-gray. Um, Bermuda. I think it's Caribbean. Caribbean. A little more blue to that. Um, crushed Velvet. Dracula. This is like the best red. Katie Glass swears by it, and so I had to pick up one. Flaming, no, Fiesta. Flagstone. Flamingo. A little bit lighter pink, a little bit more peachy in color. Um, this one's really cool too. This is Galactic. Blues and purples, super pretty. Um, Imperial Red. It's very pink to me, but it might look red on a fabric. I can see that. Lapis. London Fog. Sorry if my camera's zooming in and out is bothering you. Uh, Luau. I got a lot of pinky 
horribly ones. Um, midnight. Black and like a gray, grayish blue again. Sounds highly variegated, I like it. Pale violet. Um, it's very blue to be pale black violet. It's coming up pretty accurate, but very pretty. Red rock. Kind of a mauve color. I love this color too. Woo! Sapphire. It's a little bit more um, monotone than some of the other ones. There's not a lot of variegation in it, but I really like it. Storm clouds. And tropical sunset. This one is highly variegated. It's got purples, oranges, pinks. Yellowy, no, there's no yellow in there. Orange, pink, purple, that's what's in that one. So uh, those are all the color and cotton floss that I bought. I'll put those on the ring after I'm done with the video. Uh, see if we can keep this relatively around an hour. Um, I also bought some color and cotton fabrics. So um, I just picked a variety. I went a little bit more neutral this time with my fabric choices than I normally do. Uh, just because I'm trying to build up my fabric stash and I just like to be able to pull and neutrals obviously work pretty easily. Um, so this first one is a 28 count linen in sandstone. I feel like this is getting washed out a little bit. Um, it's a very like yellowy beige. It's got a lot of yellow to it. So I like that. I like all of these because that's why I bought it. Um, and I think these are all um, eighth yards, eighth of a yard, that, that eighth, I don't remember. Um, I think I have this in 40 count. This is 32 count Belfast in Salem, purpley gray. I think I have it in 40 count. I don't remember how it died differently, but love this one. And then this one is a really soft gray. Um, it's 32 count Joblin in Luna. So very pretty. And then of course I had to get some fabric by Leslie because Leslie's fabrics are amazing. So I bought some different stuff. The first one I bought literally because it was a 36 count even weave. Um, and again, it's relatively neutral. Um, so it's more of a pinky tan um, and it's called tiramisu and most of these I think I got the whole piece which is a fat half so tiramisu I don't think that's helping at all it started to get dark now so now I don't think the colors are gonna show up quite as well oh, I was like what is that just light coming through the basket okay um 25 count which I've never stitched on before so this will be interesting um this is beach walk which is like one of my favorite fabrics um so this is a linen I do have I already showed you my Disney castle which is 28 count Lugana this is 25 count linen um, so this is much more neutral in tone, so it's more gray and beige versus Lugana came out more purple and pink. So, yep, fat half of that. This one, this one might just be a fat quarter. Yeah, there's only one tag on it, so it must be a fat quarter. Um, this was one of my last purchases. I bought stuff like each day I was there, except Sunday, I didn't go back in there on Sunday. Um, and the fabric obviously had been pre-picked over at that point. Still plenty to choose from. Um, I didn't go in with a mad rush that first day, Friday, that first Friday, I did not. Um, the line was really long. And so thankfully I was able to just kind of put my stuff in a bag and come back and pay for it later. Um, and then I shopped more and more and more because that's what you do at StitchCon. And so this is a 40 count linen opalescent. And so the, the opal fibers are like super fine. It's really pretty. Um, and this is looking glass. So I just liked that. It's a, it comes out 
as a, like a very gray type purple. Just some nice modeling there. Again, no idea what I'm gonna stitch on any of these. Just kind of grab back. And then my one piece of crazy fabric. Um, it's a Lugana. It's the 32 count and it's opalescent. So it checks a lot of good boxes from Melissa. Um, and it's Iris. And this piece is stunning. Um, I kind of have an idea of what I might use it for. Um, and I'm going to show you both sides of the fabric. Well, it's still, it's still folded once. Um, mainly because if I unfold any more, I'm not going to fit on the camera. So here's the one side and the other side is a little bit more monotone in color. So more reds and yellows versus this side that's got the blues and the purples mixed in with that. Stunning. Opal. Who loves opal fabric? I do. I really do. Um, yeah, so that's my Stitch Con haul. So much goodness. So much goodness that I get to put away for the second time. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, and then the last thing I am going to talk about are uh, some of the people that I met. So I met a lot of people in the main stitching room. Like I said, 400 people, there were a lot. I did socialize more than I normally do, walked around, gave people needle, minder, needle minders. Um, Tony and Beth. Um, I met both of them at Situé. I met Tony the first year at Situé. I met Beth, her sister Beth um, this past year. And she is the lovely creator of this beauty. Out of state. Buddhist Buckeye. So she makes these um, for the craft gallery. Um, great big project by Billy. So met them. I had a good long talk with David, um, ex Stitching Leopard on Instagram. I don't know, and she, he has like one YouTube video. We had a really long, nice chat. Um, Jennifer and Renee, I talked about Jennifer earlier. She was the one that gave um, Pity Party Melissa the mermaid scissor bomb. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, they are sisters, I believe, and they were at the table right next to us. Um, and they were talking about doing a whistle stop retreat. So I really encourage them to do that. Um, da, da, da. I literally just had a mind blank. Jennifer, the whistle stop stitcher, she was there. She was also at the next table, a different table, but next table over from us as well. Um, she was sitting with Tony and Beth. Um, I met Amy Gable stitcher. She's a physical therapist or um, Used to be, I don't know if she's practicing anymore. I, don't, I think she said she isn't. Um, and so we had a nice long physical therapy chat, which was fantastic. Um, and I believe Christine was sitting at the table with Jennifer and Renee, and she was a CODA, um, which is an occupational therapy assistant. So, so many good therapists in the room. I could have just had like a therapy talk all day long. And then at nighttime stitching, the late night room um, over at the La Quinta. I really enjoyed that because it was uh, a much quieter, quiet being, you know, super operative word, um, a little bit more of an intimate setting. There weren't quite as many people there. Um, and I also got to see Pam and Steph a little bit more there because like I said, they were working that main, main room. I don't know if they ever sat down that weekend. Um, God love them. Uh, really just God love them. And so the one, and we sat with different people. Katie and I sat with different people kind of each night. So um, the one night we sat with Jen Lee and her mom, Cindy, um, both amazing people. I am officially joining 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. I'm going to do it. The, the big long one. Um, I don't know if I'll do the... The challenge pieces just because 
I'm working on so many other different kinds of challenges. I can't keep my head. I don't know how she does it. She has a beautiful journal too. Um, you journalers, I just don't have the time. I really don't. I'm sure it doesn't even take that long. I just don't make the time. Um, so we sat with them one night, a little obsessed with Jen Lee and her mom. Uh, we sat with Sarah and Katie. Sarah hoop cap stitches on Instagram and Katie is a nap time stitcher. Katie, I forgot your stickers. I think they're across the room. Um, so Katie made stickers for people kind of as her calling card, which was a super cute idea. They were like little floss and bobbins and super cute. Um, so I met Katie at Stitch Away 2018, the first year I went. And then I met Sarah at StitchCon last year. So she came back this year. Um, I would really love for Sarah to come to Stitch Away. I really encouraged her to because I think she would have a lot of fun. Um, and then the last night we sat with Kia and Nathan, um, Kia B and Tech Guy in the Hive, um, and they were fantastic. Really enjoyed sitting with them. Um, we had some some good chit chats, and um, we were sitting with them when they hit the twenty thousand subscriber mark on YouTube. So congratulations, Kia and Nathan. Um, huge accomplishment, uh, and I, I definitely love having you guys in the cross stitch community. I think that was most of my shout outs. I mean, I met so many amazing people. Um, Bev stitching in New York. I told myself I wasn't going to do this because I'm going to forget people and then I don't want anyone to feel left out. If I met you and talked with you at StitchCon, or not met you, if I just talked with you at StitchCon, I enjoyed meeting you. Um, there were some people that I just got to talk to a little bit more um, than others. So, you know, 400 people in a room, it's, it's hard to find time to sit and talk with um, everybody. So, StitchCon was amazing. I'm going to get back to stitching. You've watched the sun probably go down outside my door because it's dark and it was not dark when I started. i um, been going now for about an hour. You guys know I like to talk, but it was StitchCon plus like two weeks after StitchCon. So um, a good amount of stuff. So again, I want to thank you for stopping by. Um, I am doing this. So if you want this pattern, I want to stitch snow days and tell me your favorite season. Um, thanks for stopping by and I hope you guys come back next time. All right. Bye guys. So I did a video at home detailing my finish and then I realized I did it vertical and it's not going to show up great on uh, my video. So I'm going to redo it now. My uh, smallest exchange is this morning, today's Saturday, at about 11 o'clock, so about an hour or so. You can tell my voice is uh, starting to go, which is great. Um, we're just going to run through this real quick. I'm hiding in a small corner of the uh, conference center, hoping that no one sees me do this. So the pattern is Hands on Designs, where the stitching meets the sea. Um, this is a limited edition pattern uh, for Stitching Pals 2017 retreat. And so I changed out the floss here. So this is a Dinky Dyes. Um, and this is stitched on 36 count smoky blue by Zweiger. All of the details will eventually be on my um, Instagram because I'm going to post a couple pictures of this. Um, so this pattern was gifted to me by an Instagram follower and she did send one of the charms. It was supposed to have two. I ended up leaving the other one off because I didn't think it needed it. Um, most of the colors are called for um, and then I finished, I did a hard finish here um, with this mermaidy fish scale type fabric and then finished it off with um, this little rope trim. So I wanted to do this one on the beach chair just in case they didn't want us to stay stitch con, which is what I converted this upper pattern to. Um, that way they can leave this one out kind of all summer or all year if they wanted to. Um, especially if they live by the beach, but I think it's super cute. And then up here, so the pillow is, it comes in and out of the chair, so that's super cute right by itself. Even cuter with the pillow in it. 
Um, so this is the second pattern. I did a couple different conversions on this. I added a sand castle and then I changed it to say, to say StitchCon 2019. Um, this is like my new favorite color. This is Aztec Red by Weeks Dye Works. Um, those are called for, I think again, the only thing that changed was, well, I added that. So the pull of the flag here. So I don't have a sewing machine at home. So this pillow was hand stitched. Um, took me a little while, which is why I wanted to add a trim around the border. Like this seems not too bad, but the around the edge, it didn't look horrible, but I mean, it was hand stitched. So I added this trim, which is the same trim from down below. I just braided it, give it a little bit of a nautical theme. Um, and this just sits right up there. And again, I'm doing that with my left hand. So that's awkward. Um, but yeah, it just sits up there and I think it's freaking adorable. Um, so I did find another, there was one more of these chairs left at Hobby Lobby when I went last weekend. Um, and so I bought it and I'm going to redo this for myself and, uh, I may change out some of the colors, but yeah, this is probably one of my favorite finishes ever, which is why I'm going to do it again. So that's that. Um, I'm going to go back to stitching. I'm really close to a finish this morning. Um, and Donna and Shauna of Stitching Nuda have some Mardi Gras beads for us when we finish. So, um, I'm going to go see if I can, uh, get beaded. All right. I'll back to the video guys. Bye.